What is going on everybody? Today I wanted to talk to you about something I get asked very often and that's how much I pay to charge my Tesla. Now of course this is going to vary on a lot of factors depending on where you live, how you charge your car, whether you charge it at home or at superchargers or some other type of outside charging infrastructure. But I thought I'd share what I do and how much I pay and how much I have saved over gas. So if you're just looking for the quick and dirty answer, I used to pay $150 a month for gas and that was in a Ford Focus, so I was in a pretty fuel efficient car. And I am now paying $50 a month approximately to charge my Model 3 to go the same distance. So I personally have a savings of around $100 a month just in fuel costs, not counting any other maintenance savings with an electric car. Now, of course, there are cheaper cars out there, but this car is pretty expensive, and this was one way I was able to justify the expensive car with a little bit of savings on the fuel. Before we dig into this too much, if you're curious how you're going to be affected switching to a Tesla or an electric car, in general, you can expect to pay 30 to 50% on electricity, uh, versus your gas costs. Now, I'm mostly speaking from a U.S. perspective, but this works pretty well because in parts of the country where gas is expensive, electricity is also going to be a little more expensive. And same thing in parts of the country where gas doesn't cost so much, electricity is usually a bit cheaper there too. So of course, I'm closer to paying 30%. Again, uh, I pay 50 versus the 150 I used to pay. So that's a third of the cost. All right, so now really looking at the numbers here, uh, this is my pricing structure from DTE. This is my local energy company. This is the only place that I can get electricity from. You can see they have a bunch of different rates here. First of all, this is the main rate that you will get with DTE if you don't have anything special. So these are actually new. This has changed since the last time I've really looked at this. But you can see for the first 17 kilowatt hours that you're paying about 9.8 cents per kilowatt hour when you add in the delivery fee. And then everything above 17 kilowatt hours per day, you're going to be paying around 11.4 cents. Again, there are some other fees and taxes and stuff that will be included. But just for simplicity, we're going to go off of this chart so that we can kind of compare everything evenly. Now, if we look over on this side of the chart, the experimental electric vehicle rate, that is another thing that's new here. This wasn't here before. Um, I am not on this one, but this is an option. If you have an electric car, you can get a meter installed, which is pretty expensive. I think it's somewhere around $1,000, maybe a bit more than that. And then every day from 11 p.m. to 9 a.m., you are off peak. And so you're going to pay the pretty low price of around eight cents per kilowatt hour uh, off peak. Now, this is, of course, better than the first 17 kilowatt hour price of the normal plan and much better than the additional kilowatt hours on the old plan, because that's going to be even more expensive than your off peak rate. Now, if you charge on peak with this electrical vehicle plan, it's actually going to be more expensive than anything we've looked at so far. And I think this is mostly to discourage people from charging while energy is in high demand. And most of the time, this should be fine. It is a somewhat strict window. You can only start charging your car at 11 p.m. So if you get home from work at 5, 6, 7 p.m. every night, your car is just going to sit there waiting to charge for a few hours, which most of the time won't matter. But, you know, if you want to go out for dinner, you want to do some extra driving and you want to charge up a bit, you're really going to be discouraged from doing that because you're going to pay a lot to do it. They do also have this monthly fee of $48 per vehicle. Uh, that would actually work out pretty well for me. I would probably take that if I could. Um, it's not available anymore, and I also do not want to pay for the meter, which is why I have the rate I do. Moving over to time of day rate, this affects your whole house, and pretty much anyone can request this. They did ask me why I wanted it when I called, so maybe they would restrict you for certain reasons, but I just told them I had an electric car and I didn't want to pay for a separate meter, and they were fine with that. So with this plan, I can just use the meter I already have. They don't have to change anything. They just change my rates, and you can see it depends on a few different factors here. We have time of year, so June through October, and then also November through May. So you can see here the June through October, the on-peak kilowatt hours are pretty expensive. You're looking at around 18 cents per kilowatt hour in the summer. And this is during the day. So this is 11 a.m. to 7 p.m. So your window of on-peak is a lot shorter than your window of on-peak with the electric vehicle specific plan. The other thing that's cool here is if you augment some of your other behaviors, you can save even more money. So in my specific situation, our entire house is electric. We have geothermal heating and cooling, which a video is coming on that. Eventually, it just takes a lot of planning, so I haven't gotten to it yet. But the geothermal, as you can see over here on the chart, is on its own rate, so it's not really affected by these things. Our stove is electric, our washer and dryer is electric, so 100% of our house is electric. So by doing some special things, we can actually save even more money by being on this plan because if you look at the off peak at least for the summer you're looking at closer to only seven cents per kilowatt hour most of the time now this is a really good price 
And again, it kicks in all the way from 7 p.m. through 11 a.m. That entire time is off peak. So I have my car set to charge starting at 7 p.m. And then you can see in the winter months, the rates are generally cheaper. But in general, the on-peak charges are always going to be more expensive than the standard plan that you'll get with the power company. And the off-peak rates should be a good amount lower, if not dramatically lower, than your standard electricity plan. So with this time of day rate, I got to just keep my meter. I didn't have to pay a bunch of money for a new meter. And I can just plug my car in in a larger time window than the EV specific plan. And by doing this, I am able to charge my car for a really decent price. Another way to look at your charging cost is to talk in your efficiency. So the rated efficiency of the Model 3 is around 240 watt hours per mile, which if we stick with the same units uh, that we were talking about earlier with the electric company, that would be 0.24 kilowatt hours per mile. And in the summer, I do see somewhere around there, uh, it might be a little higher because I do a lot of highway driving. So maybe somewhere around 250 to 260 watt hours per mile. And in the winter, I am north of 300 watt hours per mile. So in the winter, I can expect to pay about 20 to 30% more for my electricity because I'm using 20 to 30% more electricity in the winter than I do in the summer. But at the same time, my electrical rates are cheaper in the winter with my time of day plan. So the difference doesn't work out to be all that much. All right. So if we look at one of my bills here, you can see this is the residential electric service. I have a separate meter for my geothermal. You can see off peak here is much higher than on peak. And that is because of two reasons. One, of course, I charge my car during the off peak time. And number two, like I've said earlier, we've worked to change some of our habits so that we're doing more with our electricity during the off peak time than during the on peak time. So you can see the off peak time here is right around one cent per kilowatt hour. And the on peak is 12 times that at a little over 12 cents per kilowatt hour. Uh, but where they really get you is the distribution. It's the same for all of your electricity. And then, of course, there's a couple other very small little charges they give you here for energy waste reduction, nuclear surcharge, and, you know, whatever else they want to charge you. So this bill for the month was $117. So my next bill here, you can see everything doubled. So my off-peak and my on-peak all doubled. And I've been trying to figure out what the heck is going on with this bill. So I need to call my energy company. But you can see here with the new uh, winter rates, it's a little less than one cent per kilowatt hour that I'm paying for the off-peak. And of course, it's much higher because that's when, uh, like I said, I charge my car and we do other things. Uh, but the distribution is the same price. And that is where most of the cost is coming from. That's $94 just for them to send that electricity, all of it, to the house. So this last electricity bill was a lot more expensive. That is not typical. Um, typically, my total electric bill is somewhere between $100 and $150 a month, um, with about 50 of that being for my car. The last thing we need to talk about is supercharging. Because of the YouTube channel, I have a lot of referrals, and all of our supercharging is free due to that. I've paid one time, and I think it was like 5 bucks or $2 or something. Um, you can see here, this data from Teslafy shows what I would have paid at some different supercharger stops, but those were all free. Um, so thank you if you've used my referral code. That has been really helpful. So while my car has over 27,000 miles on it, I have not paid for 27,000 miles of electricity. Uh, a lot of that was done on road trips. So we went to North Carolina and we went to New York. So that is a bit over 3,000 miles right there that none of the electricity was paid for. So that's a pretty huge savings, uh, especially compared to gas, but even just compared to paying at the supercharger, that's a pretty decent savings. So I know this can be a little dry, but uh, this is a question I get really often. So I wanted to discuss it. Let me know down in the comments what you pay for electricity. Are you charging at home? Do you charge at a charger outside of home? Do you use superchargers? Of course, the electricity cost is going to vary person to person, but the savings that you're getting over gas is going to be at least somewhat similar, and it should hopefully be pretty significant for you. 50%, if not a greater savings than that, which a little bit can kind of help justify a more expensive car. And welcome to the end of the video. If you're new here at the end of all of my videos, I answer a question from the comments. And today's question, since this video was a little bit it's specific to Michigan, I figure we can stick with that theme. This video is sponsored by the Model 3 Part Shop. You can use the code Dirty Tesla to get 15% off anything site wide. Link to their website is in the description. Happy New Year! Thanks for the video. Question Have you seen any deer on a Tesla? Are they able to pick them up, please? I've seen video after video and I have yet to see them anywhere. Meaning, will deer actually show up? on Tesla dash screen. So the car is definitely able to detect a deer. It's a large enough uh, object, <laughs> if you want to call it that, that the Tesla knows it's there. It will not display deer on the screen, but there have been a couple videos of Teslas being behind other animals. Like I think there was one of an ox and one of a horse. 
and it displayed those on the display as a person. So close enough. Um, there's also evidence from Green the Only on Twitter that dogs are now categorized as pedestrians and they show up on the screen as people. And other people have seen this. Um, so animals are detected by the car. They will show up. Now, will your car actually stop for them? Um, it can, and hopefully it will, but it's not something you want to rely on. But it is a pretty cool backup, uh, just in case, that I don't think any other cars have. The Tesla may stop for deer if one jumps out in front of you, or at least will help you apply the brakes. I have encountered one deer while driving my car, and I was on autopilot, but I hit the brake before the deer was even in the road. So I'm not sure if autopilot would have responded it didn't respond before i did anyway thanks for watching i hope you enjoyed this video i look forward to talking to you down in the comments below and i will see you in the next video